Hello Indie Game fans, as we begin to wind down the year, this is the last big burst of releases as developers scramble to get their games out before the holidays, although indie games never sleep and we still have some good upcoming ones in the weeks ahead. But I have some larger games and a port or two that may be of interest in this edition of Indie Gaming this week. Let's begin with Looking for Aliens, a very casual hidden object game that does have a wonderful art style and colour palette. While not incredibly gameplay focused, I do think that the interactive hidden object game like Where's Waldo does have its place, which does remind me of games like Hidden Folks or Hidden Through Time, only with an extraterrestrial theme looking well made. The delayed Brickwaters is supposed to be launching this week, we have covered this extensively during its initial planned release in November. It's an open world title with a focus on sailing, exploration and fighting gigantic titans with some impressive looking water physics, so here's hoping that it finally makes it to release. A cute but creepy first-person shooter is Stuffed, one where you play as a teddy bear that has to fight off nightmarish toys as you defend your owner who is a little kid. It does have a pretty interesting theme and is not a horror game per se, where the bear and the customization options do look pretty cute. The levels are supposed to be procedurally generated as well, with wave-based defense, so there are hints of a roguelite, making it an early access title of interest. I had Silo Sibyl in my watch list of 3D platformers since it really nailed that PSX aesthetic, but it's interesting to see how indie games are continuing to evolve as newer indie developers get into space. It has both side-scrolling and behind-the-back camera angles, where part of this sure looks like Donkey Kong Country, Banjo-Kazooie or Crash Bandicoot, paying tribute to the classics or having their own character and style. Interestingly, this will be an early access title, which is planned for about 6 months, with currently two thirds of the planned content in this version at release. Having previewed which word in my video on upcoming games of December, it's no wonder that it shows up once again where it's an interesting looking adventure game with crafting elements. Play as the local witch in the woods, collecting ingredients, brewing spells and passing judgement on the locals. One interesting fact is that it comes to us from developer Alien Trap, 
known for the action roguelite Cryptarch and the action platformer Apotheon, making this game of interest due to the pedigree alone. There are quite a number of bigger games of interest this week, beginning with Rune Factory 4 Special, getting PC, PlayStation and Xbox versions following on from the 3DS and Nintendo Switch release. Yes. The original was released in 2012, where if you're not familiar with the series, this is a Stardew Valley-like farming sim game, but has more of a focus on dungeon crawling combat. But I'm happy to see this being brought to a wider audience, which hopefully means a similar treatment for Rune Factory 5. I was just thinking how a little vacation would be nice. Well, looks like this is it, little buddy. My whole life is flashing before my eyes. I can't even remember how we got here. Come on, Max. Remember, we were back in the office. Wait, wait! Do the whole thing with the music and all that! Oh, all right. Developer Skunk Ape Games was formed from the ashes of Telltale Games, whose primary focus for now is on the Sam & Max series of adventure games, this time remastering Sam & Max Season 2 and re-releasing it as Beyond Time and Space. I remember playing the early Telltale games and thought that the writing was pretty good, making this worth a play even if you're not familiar with these characters. T-H-E-M! You wanna jump in? You can read my mind, Sam! God, I hope not. Sam, they're all babies! They're more frightened of you than you are of them. It's the end of our civilization! But you can save us all. We'll take the case. Oh boy, real detective work! Ah, oh, it's adorable. I think it might be a warning, Sam. Welcome, creatures of the night, to the zombie factory. Every soul I take, my army grows larger. What do you think you're doing? You know, the usual. Traveling through time and stuff. We've been living over the gateway to hell all this time and never took advantage of it. Unwittingly bringing about the apocalypse is a first for us. I'm liking the sound of this more and more. They've come for us, Max. Yep, we're screwed. Gee, I got so wrapped up in the story, I forgot to think of a plan. We could make... Nasty surprise. My lord? Mm -hmm. What was that? Ah! Hiding in plain sight. A no-brainer pick of the week is Shadow Tactics Blades of the Shogun Aiko's Choice, a standalone expansion to the tremendously popular stealth title from 2016, with this releases on the 5-year anniversary. Set in Edo, Japan, this release adds additional main missions and side objectives featuring some of the same characters, where if you even have any interest in stealth games, this is a must-play. <laughs> no challenge. The story is still being written. So many tricks. Stick and stab. Elegant landing. I have a question. Yes. We do this for Mugen. Mm. 
none shall remain standing. I'd like to show you a painting. A painting? Of someone I'm looking for. A girl who apparently looked like me. Indeed, she does look like you. In a world where we are playing Halo and watching G4 in 2021, it is perhaps fitting that we get a new Siberia game, an adventure game series that dates back to 2002, with the fourth and latest entry being The World Before this time having a two protagonist setup in two time periods, with the returning Kate Walker as one of them and another character from 70 years ago. But I'm interested in this for the lineage and historical significance. A group of scientists were staying at the refuge to prepare for an expedition to some faraway place in the east. You were my last hope. anything else in life. There has to be some compromise to get what one desires. It's like this painting has chosen me, but maybe I'm just kidding myself. There will always be a dream for you. In any case, I promised Katusha I would find her. And we'll find out who she is or was. Thunder 1, this is Zeus. Solovia is under attack. SBR is on the rise and threatening security in the region. We need your squad, Thunder 1. Get the job done. Fittingly, it is perhaps no surprise that Thunder Tier 1 comes to us from developer Crafton Inc also known as the PUBG people, since this is a gritty military shooter, but interestingly, it's a top-down real-time tactics title. It does look pretty impressive, following in the footsteps of games like Commandos, Door Kickers, or any number of police or SWAT video games where you have to stop a terrorist organization in a fictitious country. Suppressive fire. Deploy the camera. What's this here, boy? I hear something. They're on to us. Let's kick off smaller games with Crimson Clover Explosion, the umpteenth re-release of this game that dates back to 2011, getting a Steam version after releasing on Switch last year with some great action and is for fans of the genre. I just covered Deflector in Saturday's video on upcoming action roguelites, where they are releasing a free demo titled Specimen Zero, so check it out and look forward to the early access release next month. There are many stories in our past, many interesting but most untold. And though they may be forgotten one day, there will always be others to rise from the void. As we head into the home stretch for 2021, there are a number of interesting pods coming up, one of which is Loop Hero, the semi-idle roguelite deck building base building RPG strategy game, which, if you cannot already tell, does kind of cross genre boundaries. It took over the gaming world in March this year and is finally releasing on another platform, so if you've heard good things about this but have yet to pick it up, this is your chance to do so.
If you're a fan of company management games like Game Dev Tycoon, I do think that Startup Panic might be of interest getting a Steam version with new content after previously being on mobile only. Where you are running an enterprising startup and need to succeed, navigating the tricky waters of business realities. Developer Silver Lima Games is best known for the grand strategy title Stellar Monarch, and they are back with the sequel to this epic Space Empire management title. This next title has quite an interesting release since The Tourist finally comes on Steam after previously releasing on consoles and interestingly elsewhere on PC, but this voxel action adventure title is pretty neat and is worth a look. Let's kick off the top 5 with White Shadows, a monochrome puzzle platformer set in a brutal dystopia. Of course, comparisons will be made to Limbo, but this does have some good looking 3D models. I think that is good enough to warrant a spot on the list, but I do also think that people may be sick of the Limbo inspired game by now, so let's see how this game is received. Love 3 is the latest entry in a series of minimalist pixel art precision platformers where the twist is that you're able to place your own checkpoints. Where, in what I consider to be the primary game mode, you only have a fixed number of lives to get through the entire game. It does contain the levels from the first and second games, making this the definitive edition so to speak, but I quite enjoyed the original and would recommend this game.
However, it does seem like this developer has been making the same game for 7 years with the original in 2014, which sold decently well, the sequel Love to Kuso releasing in 2017, which sold less well, and finally, this entry in 2021. All of which are essentially the same game mechanically, but with different levels, but I'm interested to see what's next from this developer. While I don't particularly have any affinity for games set in space, a wobbly physics puzzle game that looks pretty neat is Heavenly Bodies, one with a unique control scheme that looks like it's meant to be intentionally difficult to control, much like Surgeon Simulator, Human Fall Flat and the like. You're playing as a cosmonaut in the 1970s, having to make your way around the spacecraft to perform a variety of tasks all complicated, of course, by zero gravity. As such, the propulsion, grabbing and moving objects portion of the game does look like fun and that getting over it kind of way, but hopefully with more control, with a sweet look as well which makes this of interest. The winner for the most unique indie game of the week is Space Warlord Organ Trading Simulator, one that is as described in the title, where you're trading a variety of organs on the intergalactic market. Stock market simulators are quite an interesting subgenre of games, where the premise of trading organs is definitely unique, where the most interesting part is the narrative that revolves around this concept. Interestingly, it comes to us from a developer that worked on Hypnospace Outlaw and an airport for aliens currently run by dogs, where this looks to be an equally unique and memorable experience that I think is worth picking up. As compared to the monochrome of white shadows covered earlier in this video, I do love the look of Wolfstrike much more, since the 2D hand-drawn art here is absolutely gorgeous, of course helped by the fact that there are giant mechs involved. Play as a trio of friends, entering a giant mecha battling tournament, having to work odd jobs to get money for repairs and upgrades, with a narrative that is more than meets the eye. It is not all fun in games, as we do get a glimpse into the complex lives of our main characters, where their past history and inevitable fate plays a role as well, which, combined with the awesome turn-based RPG combat, is a no-brainer pick taking the number one spot. For more RPG titles, watch these videos and I will see you after the jump.